Hi, Facebook land. Good evening to you. This is Marcia Sia Harris coming to you live as promised um, with a special edition of Sia's Bite and a Mouthful. And so this evening, we're really looking at grief and um, just how um, persons cope because we all have different coping mechanism. And so we just want to just talk to us this evening, just to see how it is that we are able to help someone this evening going through their process. I thought of this opportunity because it is interesting that as we approach the season of good cheer christmas the new year that so many of us this is really a time of sadness and gloom and despair because so many of us are reminded of that loved one that we have lost along the way especially a child and so this evening i'm just going to be asking you just for a minute just so that i can stream this live um to um to my viewers and um so that others are able to participate in this so um i'm not picking it up jen are you share it on on my page no i i'm looking to share it but um oh okay it is true I'm not seeing it coming up, Jen. You might have to send it to them as a so that they can view it afterwards. So, joining me this evening, I have Miss Jennifer A. M. Clark, and it's ironic. I have never known what the A. M. is for, but I'll leave it at that. Um, and Jen is a businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur of many hats. And I'll ask her to share with us later just some of um, what fall under those hats. Um, he is no stranger to me. I actually met Jen in about early 1997. Yeah. She was actually referred to me by Dr. Michael Abraham because she had formed a support group back home in Jamaica called Hope that is helping others progress emotionally. See, I still remember Jen? Yes. And she looks much bigger now than she did then. Actually, then she looked more of a little school girl, very small in body. But um, I see that she has evolved. She has, you know, so um, she was one of few persons who was really willing to share with me this evening. And so this program this evening, it's very personal to me. And that is because I have shared before and I'll share it again. On December 2nd, 1996, at 35 weeks of pregnancy, after being bed, you know, having to stay in bed with the entire pregnancy, now looking forward to having that baby, got to 35 weeks and my baby died within. And I can tell you 25 years later, it is still very painful. And how I have had to deal with this over the years is basically by masking it. So for a number of years, over 20 years well, I, I pretty much just put it on a wrap. I wouldn't speak about it. I would allow my mind just to go blank where she's concerned. Um, and so, as I said, it was like, I had 
in order to cope, I had to tell myself that it did not happen. So I had to wrap it up and tie it up and just lay it aside. And so as I have gone on over the years and I've seen persons going through, you know, losing a child, the pain that they bear, um, I quite understand. And so I have had instances that I have had to share with others just to be able to encourage them and so that they understand that I too have been, although we all have different coping mechanism, but I too have experienced it. And so those were the only instances that I really opened up to persons. And so I'm just going to ask, Jenny, we're not going to have a very long program this evening, maybe just about 45 minutes of your time. I ask you, if you'd be able to give me that, we would really appreciate it. We also ask that should you have any comments, we ask that you type it into us, you know, and we will see as best as possible how we can answer if there are questions or anything that we can comment, comment on. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jennifer Clark. So Jen, tell us a little bit of who you are. Um, okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer and Marie Clark. So that's the AM. <laughs> and um, I love my AM, to be honest. So I write the AM with, with a lot of passion. Passion. Yes, I write it with a lot of passion. Um, who am I? Just an ordinary little girl from Barbican. Um, who loves who loves life um and i am a I, I i used to own um a business a wholesale business and um i'm currently a financial advisor um for sajikor and um i wear many hats i'm also in politics which is another passion of mine, and um, a young Christian um, of Faith Cathedral, FCDC, Waltham, yes. So that's me in a little nutshell. <clears throat> you want me to continue? Yes, I want you to tell us a little bit of how we met, although I did speak about that a little bit, but I want to... And persons might want to hear your version of it. And um, I don't consider Jennifer a friend. I consider mm -hmm. her, she has moved from that to family. Family. Um, yeah. So, you know, just, just tell us a little bit, you know. And it's interesting you. because it was during a period when I found myself, I, I was, pregnant in um, 96. I actually, I think I was about 20, 27 weeks or somewhere there, almost 28 weeks. And I, I went, no, before that, I was involved in an, in an accident on Trafalgar Road. Uh, something ran into the vehicle that I was in. And then the body came out and they were making much of me and whatever. But I don't know, I don't know how I did it. But for some reason, I don't know what I went into, but I left the scene because I was so frightened. I left the scene of the accident without people even recognizing that I had left the scene. And so when I left the scene, I went home and I was fine. At least I thought I was fine. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was, the accident happened the Wednesday. So by the Friday, I was start I started feeling some discomfort. Wednesday and Friday. Sorry. I was Go ahead. 
Yes, and I and I took bed for it. The Saturday morning I woke up and um I saw some blood. Mm -hmm. I called my girlfriend because everything I did, it was my girlfriend, Karen, who now resides in Canada. Mm -hmm. I said, Karen, I, I'm seeing some blood and I don't understand it. And she said, Jen, let's go to the hospital. Hmm. So we went to the university hospital and when we went, they sent me straight to to um, labor ward, but then nothing happened. So I was then placed back on the ward, but admitted. Mm -hmm. And while there, the Saturday evening, you know, my, my mom, who is always my backbone to this day, um, she brought some pea soup, of course, and <laughs> And by the Saturday evening, I just felt a rush. A hmm. Gush come down on me. And when I looked, it was just pure blood, pure mm -hmm. blood. And I started crying and screaming and saying, somebody help me, somebody help me. Mm -hmm. The nurses came. And they just stood there because they were in awe. They, 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 they really panicked to the, the volume mm -hmm, that they were seeing. That they were seeing and stuff. And I'm saying, help me, help me, somebody help me. And by this now, um, shortly, everything just started happening, happening quickly. Doctors came and the drip and they were going like wow the drips were going like wow until i was taken to theater my son was born alive but unfortunately he didn't make it and it was no fault of his why he never made it the mm -hmm. hospital didn't have any ventilator on hand so it's not today that um, these ventilator issues are happening right. in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, I felt an emptiness. I felt an emptiness that I never knew before. I, I was so numb <laughs> that even when I had visitors and I would... I, I'm in my room and I hear somebody say, I'm, I'm looking for Jennifer Clark. I would just sink. Uh, you know, I would just sink. And, sorry. Sorry, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I would just sink and... Um, when they come in, even when they come in the room, I wouldn't talk and, and, and so on. Because I was trying to understand what happened. A day ago, I was pregnant. Today, I'm not pregnant. What happened? I've never heard of anybody losing a baby before. I know that when you see persons pregnant and you don't see them pregnant again, mm -hmm. you say, oh, them dash it away. And you know, yes, you're that they did like an abortion. That. Yes, we are mm -hmm. naturally mean. But then when it happened to me and I know that I never dash it away. You never did anything. I didn't do wrong. anything. And I don't have it anymore. What what? What was happening? And so um it just I just sank. I just sank. I I totally sank. And even when I came out of the hospital and stuff and went home, I didn't want to come out. Because that is the stigma now. Cause the stigma, you're you're embarrassed. So I would peep through the window all the time. I would peep through the window. Anybody, any happening, I would just peep through the window. I would not go out. And 
my partner then peter he texted me a while ago um if he wasn't taking me i would leave the house because i was really really down and so um then on my visits for my checkup and all of that because there's another side to it you know because the hospital was was negligent mm -hmm. also in their care so that was another thing but to but to um but to to fast forward to how we met it was during that process that i met dr abrams michael abrams mm -hmm. and he took the time to sat with us as young couple as a young couple and explained what happened to us because the doctors didn't want to 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 really talk to us and they kept apologizing and all kind of stuff but they weren't really saying much mm -hmm. and of course i had to register about the birth and the death and by having mikey you know attending to me and all of that and he was then um branching out into obstetrics and gynecology we kept that contact and you know i kept telling him how i was feeling and i'm saying if i'm feeling like this what about the next person because right away i can tell you there was a transition an immediate change in me as an individual because judgmental left me to be judgmental that left me even if i wasn't consciously judgmental i don't carry that persona um because i'm saying if when you see somebody pregnant and they are no longer pregnant mm -hmm. you assume the worst right that this happened and so that immediately left me but something else happened i was so angry i was so sad and i was angry at god hmm. i was angry at god and so mikey we started talking and and i and somewhere in the conversation he said but what about the next person and he said, Jen, you know, I have a number of ladies who have gone through a similar experience. You want us all to come together? Say yes. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Pottinger, who was the psychologist, right. was brought into play. And that is how we met. Um, and we, we brainstormed on the name and we came up with hope, helping others progress emotionally and hope lived for quite a while up to 2016 until we you know we really got um, busy and um i don't want to say it, it, it's totally dead but um because mikey tried to to resurrect it and and mm -hmm. so on but that is basically how we met um, through hope and feeling how I was feeling. I wanted persons to share with persons who were experiencing the same pain that I was feeling and didn't know what to do with myself. But and you know, of course I've gone to, to, to Michael and I did guidance and counseling. So I had that background and stuff. So, um, yeah, and we came together. And Still together. friendship has evolved into family since, because that's almost 30 years now. But you know, Jen, as I listened to you, 
it's ironic because sometimes when you're feeling these emotions and you know viewers might i say that this was not the first pregnancy that i was losing mm -hmm. i had already lost two pregnancies prior mm -hmm. but those were like at the first trimester you know a couple of weeks and whatever but jennifer summed it up well because I was on bed rest for from 10 weeks. I was on bed rest for 10 weeks. And just like you said, I didn't even know that we had so many similarities because actually a bike guy ran into my vehicle right along um, Conson Spring Road, close to Don Robin Avenue. I was just driving one day and there comes this bike man straight into the back of the vehicle. And instantly, the similar thing that happened to you, I just felt a rush, mm -hmm. right? And they were able to stop it. You know, I was admitted to St. Rose if they were able to stop it. And, you know, I went on. I had to, you know, as I said, bed rest. But I was able to get to 35 weeks, and I thought that I was okay. And so now it was about looking forward to, you know, having a baby, taking home your baby, and all the things you had done all the preparations um and then i can't say what happened i just know i woke up the friday morning and i just felt this pain the bottom of my my, my belly here and um that was it and for the rest of the day i feel my tummy like you know a little bit stiff and whatever but still not pain it but then come sunday now i realized that I wasn't feeling any movements yeah. and by the time i got to the hospital the, the am amniotic fluid everything was still going just the same you mm -hmm. know and that's where i met dr abram and he was like he didn't even know how to tell me because he was like if you had come like maybe two hours before maybe you know we could have you know but that was it and mm -hmm. then for me it's like the cycle continues yeah. because the following year i had an ectopic pregnancy which caused me to lose my right ovary yeah. and then the following year i got pregnant with my son and when i got pregnant with my son and that is why i say to people do not be condemning of people no. i mm -hmm. do not condone yeah. abortions but at the same time i understand persons who have made the choice yeah. and that is because me personally I walked into three doctor's offices. I walked into Dr. office. You know, office. the truth be told, mm -hmm. pregnancy is not a walk in the park. It's not. You're risking your life to bring another life into this world. Mm -hmm. It's not a walk in the park. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a sacrifice that one makes and 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 when you can see persons do six seven eight nine ten my mother has six of us done at hats off to her hmm. i now have a son of my own who is now 14 and that wasn't a um a better rose either because From what happened with that first pregnancy, I was able, I'm not able, as a matter of fact, to go into labor. So carrying this pregnancy and knowing that anything can happen at any time is traumatizing. Um, is traumatizing mm. in and of itself. Hmm. You, understand? you know, it, it's funny, you know, as I as I had mentioned earlier on, mm -hmm. because the the, the, the the fear that comes, yes. especially after you've lost that child, had that miscarriage, mm -hmm. the fear that you go through, which mm -hmm. you're you know the, the 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 pregnancies that come thereafter it's like mm -hmm. that's enough to traumatize you yes, yes and it, so it as i said you know that for me when i got pregnant 
thankfully I now have a 22 year old son after yeah. all that happened. But mm -hmm. after I, when I became pregnant with my son, having mm -hmm. had four miscarriages and basically like one stillbirth, 35 weeks, I was like, hmm, ain't having another baby. And if you know Dr. Abraham well, you know, the yes. first thing that Dr. Abraham is tell us, you have to get pregnant again. That's the, it, yes, it's, it's like, gonna it's encourage like the you to only, on. The only remedy that's gonna make you whole is when you hold a baby in your arms. Yes. That's yes, what he yes. always says. And so he's always encouraging women, as long as you're able to carry up, go, go through it. I but, remember when I became pregnant with Michael, Mm. I was actually seeing three doctors at the same time. Yeah. And I was seeing Dr. Kutani, I was yeah. seeing Dr. Abraham, and I was seeing Dr. Um, Joseph at uh, Medical Associates, yeah. Yeah. right? No, um, yeah, Medical Associates is a one and a half to three year old. Mm. So I would walk into one office and they would say something. And I mm. leave there and I walk into the next one. Mm -hmm. And I walk into the next one. And that's yeah. what that was how I had it. I really wanted to have stuck with Dr. Habram, but at the time mm -hmm. he was no longer at UE. Yeah. And yeah. he recommended that I, you know, be with someone who is at university because of my probably frequent admissions to the hospital. And yes, that did happen because um, my son was taken at 33 weeks. Mm -hmm. And for that 33 weeks, I would mm -hmm. sometimes be in the hospital two weeks then i'd go home for a couple of days then i'd be right back. Mm -hmm. i mean there was a corner to the to the back of that maternity ward that mm -hmm. actually became home for a couple of us who were pregnant yeah. because that became our home so mm -hmm. i mean when the nurses the nurses you know you develop a relationship with them so when they see you mm -hmm. coming in then they would have to clear your bed Yes. So you go right back around there. You have your you do your hair around there, you mm -hmm. do your nails around there, you do everything <laughs> that little corner right around there. You know, everything. It was home, it was where we mm -hmm. made friendship, it was where we bonded. But, but the truth know, is, the truth is, while while we would encourage, you know, um persons to try again, it, it's not that one, two, three. And you need to grieve. You need to grieve. You need. And what about that person who never gets pregnant again? You um, know, we were blessed in that we were able yes. um, to have pregnancies after and to be able to have children. But there are some who never ever. Do you remember this lady that um, was at the hospital, Miss Brown? I think she was, who had had so many miscarriages that. When she had a child, the entire hospital was there to support her? Um, not quite, not quite. Because so many persons have passed through my hands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it it's hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, you use the word blessing. We had a baby named Blessing. Blessing, I, re I remember her. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's not one, two, three like that. And what we do, we normally encourage persons to go through the process, go through the grieving process and give your child the name that he or she was supposed to have had. Um, so you personalize it. Um, another thing is that you, who is in the process of grieving, have to teach people how to deal with you you know and your emotions because they may say the wrong thing and just trigger you without even knowing so you have to teach them how to handle you but jen how do you teach them because we are typically mostly a nation of insensitive persons yes, yes and i'm not being true. negative when i say that no i think mm -hmm. the thing is that for a lot of us because mm -hmm. i can tell you i had had a daughter prior to that mm -hmm. um my baby dying to tony and well i dubbed her tian um mm -hmm. for short but i had a daughter i had a um i had a seven or eight i think Terry was up maybe about eight at the time seven at the time right mm -hmm. And it's sad when I look back at it now, because mm -hmm. I wish 
And I tell people that, you see, child psychology, psychology mm -hmm. on a whole, I tell people, I'm sorry that I never experienced it earlier on in my life. Mm -hmm. Because the baby died, Basil mm -hmm. and I never grew together. Never, mm -hmm. never, ever, ever. As a matter I encourage of, people to do that. I as a matter of fact, 25 years later, I don't mm -hmm. think we ever sat down and talk about the details of it. Because that ironically... Is, so what they would come to me with, I'm like, he wasn't even in the island when it happened, Jennifer. That's a sad thing. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even in the island when it happened. And so we never sat down and spoke about it. He just came and he realized that I was no longer carrying the baby. Mm -hmm. And I just said to him that she died. I want, I personally wanted to have buried Tony Ann. Yeah. But I think he figured that I was looking for a place that I could go cry. Yeah. And so he said, no, leave it at that. And if there's one thing that I regret mm -hmm. to this day is that I didn't give her a funeral. Yeah. There's no place yeah. that I can go to place flowers like mm -hmm. this year. Or I can yeah, say this I'm was, not up there. Up in the 90s, it was, it was unheard of for you to be doing things like these, you know? And and you that is why, Jen... about their loss. And then, you know, as I said before, we never we never spoke to it uh, to Terrian about it. That's a yeah. sad thing. So I think up until this day, mm -hmm. she knows that the baby died, but there was no angle for her to have grieved it. Yeah. And I think that that is why when I was pregnant with Michael mm -hmm. and I was being admitted frequently to the hospital, okay. mm -hmm. I think her biggest fear Yes. is that she couldn't do well in school because yes. she would just sit in school and she would just cry each cry. time I was admitted to the hospital because mm -hmm. you know what she told the teachers? Mm -hmm. Mommy's going to die. die. Or the baby's going to die like the other baby died. Mm -hmm. And so we never discussed it. We never yeah. had a conversation with her. So she never got a handle on yeah. how to handle it. That's and so, so this we evening... Don't, don't talk about... And so, viewers, this evening, as we come, we don't just want to come and just talk. We're not just talking. No. We want and we hope that at the end of this conversation, mm -hmm. that we would have helped somebody mm -hmm. to know that grieving is a process and that the way how and it's I okay. grieve, and it's the way okay. how Jennifer grieve mm -hmm. might not be the way how you grieve. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and I it's tell people... You know, Pat was grieved differently. One of the sad things, you know, Jen, was that I remember I had a, somebody who should have been a very good friend of mine at the time. Mm -hmm. And she never came to me and she never said what happened. Mm -hmm. But she had a daughter who was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And she called me one day when I went back to the office and she was like, what you do with the baby things? I said, they're at the house. And she was like, I come in for them. I want them for my daughter. And she called her daughter by name. And I said to her, I said, I'm not giving them away. Because can you imagine the pain of just packing up all those things to give them away? Mm -hmm. You know what she said to me? She said two things to me. She said, I started crying. And she said, so what are you crying for? The baby never ever born. And you care about the baby. So what, what, what are you going on like that for? And then she said to me, why you, why you want to keep the baby things anyhow? You don't say so you can't have a baby. Mm -mm. That Jen, was it. If somebody had slapped me, mm -hmm. I would have felt better. Mm -hmm. I remember I got up from my office desk and I went into that bathroom. And the wheels that came out of me, mm -hmm. the sounds that came out of me, yeah. I don't know where they came yeah. from. Very vicious. And and sometimes the, the truth is. I really chalk it up to that they really don't know better. Um, I believe that we are cultured to be crude in, in such a way that we don't know how to respond hmm. in kind. And that is why I say when you're in this in, in in this position you have to teach people how to how to handle you because they don't know they really genuinely don't know they don't know do you think some of them really care jen i i wouldn't want to say that they don't care 
but um, there are some of them that if you try to say this is the way they say you, you know that saying say not until when the shoes is on the other foot right they don't know how you feel until when they find themselves in, in that, that situation place. they don't know they don't know the emptiness yeah you know jen the numbness the heartbreak pain, that talk about the heartbreak you, jen you can't because, touch you can't say it is exactly right here that hollowness for me jennifer mm -hmm. my thing was that i know that i felt my heart literally mm -hmm. shattered yeah I could feel every piece of my heart breaking away. Mm -hmm. So when I tell people that I experience what heartache is, I experience yeah. it twice. Mm -hmm. I experience it on a personal level otherwise, yeah. and I experience it with tears. Mm -hmm. It's like a literal pain. It's yeah. like you literally feel every part of you shattering, mm -hmm. you know? But, um. We're not going to be long on this program tonight. Yes. You know, what What? What parting word, and I'm going to see if I can get um, mm -hmm. Apostle Sharon Bennett to join us, you know, just to, to take a spin on it from a spiritual point of view, mm -hmm. you know, because what do people do when your faith is tested like this? What does Boy, someone do the, when this you know, You know, one of the favorite um, quote. That comes with such a loss is that mm -hmm. God knows best. And um, <sighs> while it may be true, you don't want to hear that. No. Did you want to hear that? I didn't. Oh, no, you don't want to hear that. Look here. When anybody no, why came God, to why me God, with, why God, why me? When, when me anybody so. came to me with that, Jennifer, mm -hmm. I, I just <laughs> want to say, come out of my house. Just go, yeah, just, just go. go. Because God. I was hungry with God and I told yes. God and I was mad with him. Because of my thing really when I was bro. talking to God, I said, God, I, yeah. how is it that you take a woman who can't care for the child and you give that woman the opportunity to have that child and that woman yes. have that child, I can't take care of the child and me there you want the baby. And I was mad with God. I was so mad with God, mm -hmm. right? And I remember, I remember one day I was going from my bedroom. I think you know my house, Jen. So I was going from the living room to the bedroom. I was alone at home. That's how my change sort of came about. Mm -hmm. And when I was going, Jen, as I got up from the living room, I think I was going into my room to go cry. Yeah. And as I got into the door of my bedroom, I'm looking now. I had a chest of drawer right there entering into the mm. room. And as I got there, Jen, just like how you and I talking, mm -hmm. I heard a voice says, Thy purpose, Lord, I cannot see, but all is well that's done by thee. And Jen, I was looking around. Because at the time, I you I grew up in church. I was I was a Christian, but you know, you leave the faith and whatever. So, I, I, mean, I, I started looking because I wanted to know who spoke. But I was the only one in the house. But I literally heard the voice just like you and I speaking. And I think that is where I kind of got some relief um, from the pain and the trauma. You know, mm -hmm. I have Sandra on, you know, Sandra is here commenting. And Sandra lost a child he was he was maybe an adult teenager but sandra also experienced what it is to have lost mm -hmm. a child and i think too when you have had a child that you you've held that child you've watched that child yes. grow, and i know you're looking yeah. for that child to go to college and to give your mm -hmm. grandchildren and to give you all the other things and that yeah. happen how do you deal with it yes that's an, that's another story that's another you know. story for another time and so we have some comments here and i just mm -hmm. want to share some of these comments mm -hmm. with you um well my sister actually logged on to say good night mm -hmm. um and then i have carlene ilton and she says good night 
and that's oh, somebody else. In, okay those yeah, are my that, peeps <laughs> yeah that's um somebody else oh that's somebody you know right mm -hmm. right and then my friend from high school enos would always a great supporter of mine says great topic my heart goes out to you ladies thank you enos we appreciate that donna thompson says you're comforting a lot of souls grieving is important I think that they don't understand. And Donna continues, I don't have a clue how to deal with another person's grief. So I find myself ignoring it. So I will talk to the person and cheer them up and totally ignoring what is going on with them. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way because sometimes it's best if you don't say anything more than say yes, the wrong thing. Yes, it's best you don't say anything and, and then say the wrong thing. Right. Because, you know, like somebody come and tell you, God knows best. You don't yes, really want to yes. hear that. Just come sit down, look for me, give me. Sit and you just sit. And that's exactly. fine. That is so fine. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Sandra says, no, I don't know. They know is exactly. And then she says, exactly. And then Donna says, I just don't know how to address it with them. And that's okay, Donna. Your presence is all that someone needs yes, right. sometimes. Yes. Um, is this Aishika? Hi, yes. Aishika. She says night, 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 night to you as well. And Sandra responded to say her son was 25 when she lost him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Sandra, my heart really goes out to you. And I must tell you, hats off to you because I notice every year yes. um, you go to the field, you, you go to the cemetery and you take mm -hmm. your flowers and you have a celebration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is so awesome. Uh, we are joined now on our stream by Apostle Sharon Bennett. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to add her to the stream. <laughs> Hi, my friend. Hi, Apostle. How are you doing? Hi, bless you, day. bless you. I'm not, I'm not feeling so well, but I'm really trying to. Mm -hmm. I did my COVID vaccine yesterday, so it really have me down a little bit. Okay, so, okay. and I yeah. do thank you so much for joining us. And um, thank you so much. We're, we're going to be wrapping up shortly, but I want to give you the opportunity um, to, and and I know you know it's really. Imp sacrificial for you because i know you were supposed to be out you know taking care of some other stuff so i do thank you for taking the time out to share with okay, us this thank evening. You. and you know we've been talking about you know just grief how people deal with it mm -hmm. um i have a friend on the line she lost her son at 25 years old you mm -hmm. know um Jennifer here, she lost her baby. She was 28 or there about weeks pregnant. Her baby was born. Oh, pregnant, yeah. Her baby was born alive, but then the baby died, you know. And how do we say to somebody? Because you know the favorite thing that we love to say, Apostle. Oh, God knows best. Yeah. There is no, there is no, there is no word in the dictionary that you can use to apply to everyone's situation everybody go through grief in uh, a different way mm -hmm. even i'm sorry hold on my light went out hold on <laughs> <laughs> even jesus himself at one point the bible tell that he he cried mm -hmm. it's normal for you to cry it's normal for you to hurt but what mm -hmm. i would say if somebody going through something you know go through the process yes don't don't say don't that say you know Get out, snap out of it. You can't yes. snap out of having somebody in your life and then they just leave in, in a split of a second. So go mm -hmm. through the process. Exactly. Go through the process. The only thing yes. I will caution you, somebody on, is don't stay there longer than God intended for you to stay there. Because mm -hmm. sometimes situation will cause us to stay places longer than we plan and cause more damage. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, you got to know when the time come for you to pull yourself out as well. Yes. In life, there are seasons. There are four seasons in, the, in you know, in, in life and cycles. And um, sometimes, you know, even like us Floridians right now, we're dressed in boots and all those stuff because we, we, we you know, it's just our chill. While in New York, it's freezing cold where you guys have to have on snow boots and everything. Now, yeah. there's no way somebody in new york can dress like somebody in florida in this season because it's different weather mm -hmm. even though we're in the same country so know your season that you're in 
And when the time comes for your summer, you got to pull yourself out of your season and get into your summer season. What yeah. if you so never had experienced that summer season again, um, Rev? No, that's the problem now. That's the problem. Because God says there's a time and a season, season. for everything. And as I said, sometimes situation will cause you to stay longer than God intended for you to stay there. Um, it's good also to have positive people around you. Positive yes. people, not persons who that are going very through. important. Yes. Not persons who are going to have a pity party for you. Because sometimes yes. we need a slap. Sometimes we need, to, need a slap to get us out of that place that we've been in so, so long. Mm -hmm. so sometimes you're going to hear some hard truth some tough truth mm -hmm. let me give an example i remember i was going through a marital problem you know going through a divorce and um i sunk in depression i sunk yeah. in depression and one of the sad thing is that every pastor are saying that suck it up you know you know it's 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 it's, it's everybody go through it everybody go through problems everybody go through this so you shouldn't be feeling the way you're feeling to the mm -hmm. point where my head my hair fell off my head um, I start overeating. I start, yeah. I was on sleeping pills and then I pushed myself into work and school. Mm -hmm. Now it took one of my, one of my armor bearer to come to the house. And she said to me, I don't care if you want to live. I don't care if you want to live, but live for your daughter. Yeah. Now she was not eight at the time. And she said, go take a shower. I didn't know that for one week or more, I didn't take a bath. But Sunday, I put on my makeup, put on my face, and I go to church like everything was okay. But behind that, there was yes. a pain, there was hurt. When I went in the shower and I pulled my clothes down, I was smelling as a woman. Yeah. And I didn't know. And I come to a place that said, nobody should cause me to get to a place that I don't even smell myself anymore. Yes. So I yes. pull myself. I, I had to pull myself out of it. What is mm -hmm. going to be the camel that break the straw that break the camel's back camel's for you? You got to get to a place where you said, you know what? I got to pull myself out of this. I got to yes. pull myself because life goes on. By the way, the person who died, would they want to see you grieving for so long? Yes. No. There comes a time when you got to pull yourself from the wreckage yeah. and try to pick up the pieces and move on. It's not mm -hmm. going to be easy. But take yeah. it in strides one day at a time. One day at a time. Right? Amen. One day at a time. Hmm. Just Amen. like that. One day at a time. Yes. Don't push it. Don't cry. Yeah. One day at a time. Cry if you have to. Scream if, if you have, have to. Scream if you have to. Yeah. Break, TV break, whatever. Just but do go what through. you have to do. Go through the process. Go, go through, through the process. process. Very well. Go through. Very well said. Right? Thank you so and much. We, we encourage persons to go through the process. Yes. I, I don't know what you're feeling. I've never been there. Uh, God help. But I remember when my daughter lost her baby. And I tell you, mm -hmm. I felt like I was the one pregnant. And I tell you, for, for days, for months, I yes. cried. Yes. I wept. And I think it was, I got comfort when my daughter who lost the baby began to encourage me. Mm -hmm. I said, mommy, you know what? We're going to get through this. God is going to yes. bless us again. Mm -hmm. And no, no, I'm a proud grandmother too. Okay. So. Okay. Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right. They're waiting for me now. So I have to run. I'm holding them All up. All right. So I'm going to ask the you best. before you run, Pastor, can you just, uh -huh. um, just give a word of prayer just for somebody who is listening? A word of encouragement. Okay. Well, you have already given your word of encouragement. Just a word of prayer. Yes. Um, okay, so praise is, God. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon, God, and we, 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 we give you praise because you're God and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Father God, you said there's nothing new under the sun. Father God, you said there's a time and a season. So you know that once there's a life, things are going to happen. Father, I ask that whoever is listening to the sound of my voice right now, who is going through a process of hurt, grief, depression, frustration, or even suicidal thoughts from the loss of someone. God, I ask you by the power of the Holy Spirit to pull them back from that place, Father. I call back 
their mind. I call them back in their right senses. I call back that one on the verge of, of saying, this is it, I'm over. God, even give them a glimpse of something in the future that they should look towards Almighty God. Father, I call upon you because you're God. And even, Lord God, those who have lost baby, even through pregnancy, God, miscarriages, Father, you are the giver of life. I ask your lord by your grace oh god to bless that womb again father in the name of jesus christ i come against any spirit of barrenness father in the name of jesus i you bless that woman let her womb conceive again lord and if she had been losing the baby whatever i've been causing her to lost her babies god as of this night oh god we stop the phone my God, that have been causing God, the babies to come out, God. And as of this day, God, right now, Father, we do a circlage on their womb now, God, and those babies shall remain in the womb, God, in the mighty country, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for that mother who have lost her child, God, how can a mother stay and the love sees towards the child that she bears. There's no comforting words, God. But Lord, is He gonna comfort those that mourn? So, Father, even now, let your comfort and harm wrap around her, God and the Father. Let them know, God, that you give life and you take life. But we still gotta find a praise on the inside and say so we're gonna bless the name of the Lord. Maybe lust of a husband or a wife. Even through this COVID season, God, so many family members have gone. But this moment, God, we are saying, Lord, wipe the tears from their eyes and give them the grace to pick up the pieces one day at a time. So, Father, I ask you, let the comforting spirit of the living God comfort them now, Father. We give you praise and we give you glory. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Amen. name of the Thank Lord. Thank you so much, Apostle. We will talk. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you bless so you much. Apostle. Already. God bless you. Yes. Okay, bye. So as we are about to wrap up. Yes. Um, just want to thank Apostle for coming on. I know she's out, you know, with some function and she took the time out to be with us, you know, just to give us a word. Because every now and again, we still need to know that there's still a healing Jesus and that he's there for us in every situation. And so, Jen, as I'm about to wrap up, I just want to speak to the dads. Because a lot of times when these happen, when these things happen, yeah, we, focus we on... focus on us. Yeah. Right, Jen? Yeah. And we don't take time out to think of the men. Yes, how are they feeling? And a, we don't the take, carriers. Exactly. And so we don't take time out to, to, to think about them. And I'm also going to remind the men, yeah, we know you are grieving and mm -hmm. all of that, but find some time out that you can grieve together. Yes. You need, to, you need to share because sharing is important, you know. It is. Because you, you don't know what happened, so to speak. And you want to get an understanding of what happened. What did you do wrong? You're going to blame yourself because you were at work, you weren't around more, you weren't, you know, all these things. Mm -hmm. But then communication plays a very big part. It has its place in the grieving process. You need to let her know exactly how you are feeling about what transpired because he may be blaming you because he told you not to wear that slippers and you wore that slippers and it happened yeah and it may not have had anything to do with the slippers and jen we we know and we have seen where a lot of relationships have crumbled yes. on the yes. things like these have seen it there, yes. there, 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 are, there are some stuff that when the husband speaks to me or the, or the partner, whatever it is, mm -hmm. speaks to me, the wife doesn't even know that's what he's thinking. Yes. I have to say, no, you guys have to come together. Yeah. And, 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 and share. You need to share. Because you know what? It tends to bring 
them closer. Mm-hmm. It tends to bring them closer, but then there are times if it is not communicated the right way, Except and it now becomes a blame game that it yes. can cause the severing and the severing. end of the relationship. So I would advise that if as a couple, persons don't mm. understand how to go about it, seek mm. professional help. Yes. Seek professional help. Get a counselor. Yes. Get somebody. Yes. Get a psychiatrist. Get a, a what psycho psychologist? A get a counselor get somebody like and let me advise a lot a lot of times people the pastor want to go as with well uh, you, 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 the exactly. church offers that kind of support yeah but then again to a lot of pastors you want somebody who has experience in that area and not every pastor maybe they can counsel from a biblical point of view but they can counsel on a rounded point of view. So sometimes right. it's always best if you get somebody who is a specialist, mm -hmm. you know, in that area. And with that said, you know, I, every year I write a little, well, starting last year, you know, I mm -hmm. have a little poem that I did for, um, for, for Tian. Yes. You know, um, I'm not even gonna read it. <laughs> <laughs> but um but Why I you don't want to read it you don't want to share it with us that's part of your healing you know <laughs> so if you resorted to to um to poetry writing mm -hmm. you know that's your healing all right so i'll, I'll do a little part of it mm -hmm. and it says t and you know you have the so it's T and with that little dash in the yes. middle of it mm -hmm. and it says my angel in the sky Yes. Hi, my name is Tian, and I was born with wings to fly. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm an angel in the sky. Watch over my mom and dad, my sisters and brother too. Mm -hmm. I sometimes get sad when I think that we never got a chance to meet and greet, mm -hmm. to whisper, to giggle and wiggle and share, us, and share secrets deep. Of the million mm -hmm. hugs and kisses and the many vacation missed, Mm -hmm. but, but then I smile and think, do you ever think of me and wish you oh, knew yes. just how much yeah. I care or dare to hold me dear in your imaginary visions of dreams and visions mm -hmm. of happy times and sad times? Because every family have those too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm happy. I wish you could see. I float on wings and I dance and sing. Mm -hmm. as i think of each of you i'll just cut it there okay then you see that's your therapy you know your therapy over the years so you choose writing um you you choose to remember her by um through poetry mm -hmm. you know some people light a candle some people do a little church service whatever it is that makes you comfortable mm -hmm. you know it's therapy and it's healing. Anyhow, to my to our viewers out there watching us, yes. we hope that they, you know we have come to the end of this program because I have mm -hmm. to leave. And yes. some way, somehow, I'm just going to ask Jen to take a minute because we don't have more than a minute just to give her final words as we come to the end of the program. Guys, um, Losing a child, it's not the easiest thing. And it's not the end of the world either. It feels like the end of the world, but it's not. And so I want to assure you that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Just go through your process. Just go through your process and you will come out much better on the other side. Thank you. All right. So we've come to the end of the program. We hope that we have been able to help you mm -hmm. in some small way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, if you need someone to talk to, as I've always said, 
Mm -hmm. Always feel free to DM me if you want information on Jen to speak to her, DM me. I will get the information to her. We are here. We are willing to speak with you. We are willing to share with you because as we say, we all grieve in different ways. In different ways. It has been 25 years mm -hmm. and I have had to find my own coping mechanism. Jennifer right. has had to find hers as well. Right. Um, but we still are able to, during, with all the sadness, we still can think of something to smile about at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we use a smile to hide the tears. Yes. But we still are here and we're giving thanks for life. You know, my grandmother used to say, she said, what don't cost life, don't cost death. Mm -hmm. And you know, as sad as it may sound, mm -hmm. if Jen or I, or if you had died, we would not have been able to give birth to another life. Yes. yes. So in all things, God turn it around in our favor yes. and for good. So we yeah. give thanks. This is Marcia Sia Harris with a special edition of Sia's Bite and the Mouthful. And I promise you, I know I have been off here for a little while, but I promise you that comes January. You never know. Maybe come next week. I mean, I might just be back. Um, but we will be coming to you on a more frequent basis with CS Bite and a Mouthful. Let me hope that mm -hmm. we were able to at least give you a word of cheer or comfort. Jen, thank you so much, my sister. Yes, I Madam. will speak thanks with then. you. Yes. And thanks again so much. We're going to end the broadcast. And I right. have to Good evening, go. everyone. Thank you. Ashika, Carleen, all the guys who came on. That's my campaign personnel, you know. Okay. My backbone. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and to Donna, Sandra, you know, all the other persons who came all on. All the other persons. We just want to say on. thank you so much. You have made, have to make the program um, more interesting. So until next time, Marcia Sia Harris saying bye. I'm out of here. Okay, bye. Safe travel now. Thank you, sweetie. Cool. Mm.